Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Brix BRX Do More PLC Dynamic Web Pages. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. The link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start your video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So up on my screen from last time, we enabled our uh, HTTP web server. And we also put in a static IP address here or ensured that we had a static IP address so that we can find our web server. And here's our configuration here, as well as our web server, we've enabled this. And then we've also set up our server whitelist that will enable or tell which items can actually communicate to the web server. So there are setup uh, instructions that we needed. And then next, what we'll do is we look at the actual website that came back and we showed information as well as status, the IO, the data view, system log, user log. And then we had something with user, user pages. And these user pages is where we actually will uh, develop our code that we can then program into the bricks to display information that's actually in our system. So the first thing we'll do is take a look at um, what we call the uh, REST or do more REST API and REST meaning a RESTful API or a representational state transfer. And then the API stands for application programming interface. So if we look at uh, the REST, what it is basically is a URL that we can ask for information out of the Bricks Do More PLC. So in this case here, we specify our IP address 192.168.1.11. We ask for data. It's a JSON format, and we just give it a variable name. In this case here, we set analog in, and we start at WX0, and we ask for eight. What it comes back in is a JSON um, array, and the variable analog in and then we get our eight different values that we have for this array if we hit refresh and we'll get the new values in here then we can ask for things like the scaling factor in and again all we're doing is asking for it and it's saying we're asking for one right here and again this is presented in a an array uh, format for us reset, reset there, refresh that and we get the new value here so every time we refresh, it gets new values in for our variables that we've asked for. And here, our digital input. This tells us what the digital input is, whether on or off. And again, I just hit refresh and it'll refresh and show me the latest status. If I were to try to turn that input off and hit refresh, you'll see that goes off. And then we'll just leave it on again and then refresh and it turns back on. So that is our RESTful API, and that is what our dynamic web page is actually going to be all about. And dynamic web pages are basically um, things happen on the screen, and we actually have two. We have a server side um, dynamic web page, and we have a client side. In our case here, we're going to be using client side uh, web base. Now, in order to make a web page, what we need to do is develop the HTML code to actually uh, have that web page. And there's a site called w3schools.com and it has a great information. It's a great resource to actually create your web page for you. And a web page is nothing more than um, a notepad page that has a .htm uh, extension on the back end to represent that if you are looking at this page it is actually a website page so here is the HTML tutorial and I can do things like go down the colors and we can look at the colors and what I like about this is that we can go right into the sample it gives you a sample here of how to utilize the colors but we can try it ourselves it actually will come up and it will actually allow me to change certain things here 
and it will automatically change here when I hit run. So let's just change this to blue to, uh, we'll say uh, green. And as soon as we do that, we hit run, you'll see now that it is green. So a great little tool that we can use in order to develop our website and web pages that we want. So let's take a look at our program itself that we're gonna use for our um, system here and our dynamic web page. And we've developed this code here based on um, that W3 uh, school. And we have, first of all, we've changed the background color to light gray. And then we've had a, um, an image that we create. And our image um, has a width of 32 and a height of 32. And then we have our logo or our name, ACC Automation. And we put a link in to that uh, description so that we can actually go to our web page when someone hits it. So I'll reference something else. Then we have a little bit of documentation. We're bringing our analog in, WX0. We're bringing our scaling value in, w, or RX0. And then we're bringing our digital inputs, X0 to X7. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna update every 200 milliseconds on our website so that the data actually looks like it's live viewing and we get that uh, information to the viewer or to our uh, user so that he can develop or do something with that information. Then what we do is we have a, a paragraph, we have an ID of ACCA, we just give it a uh, location. Then what we do is we start our scripting language. Now the scripting is actually in uh, JavaScript. So we start a variable here and it's a H or XML HTTP request. And what, what it is, is we look at the application JSON and we do this function. So if the uh, request is okay, then what we do is we part or parse the JSON information into uh, a variable called my array, my ARR, and then our status digital is zero. So, and then what we do is for variable I, what we do is we take a look at our digital inputs and we go through it, all eight of them, and we determine whether or not that status is gonna be off or on. And accordingly, what we do is we set uh, our screen to indicate that on off action. Then we have our uh, document, we actually edit it and we're gonna put our document in. And what we do is we're gonna put a border around certain things or analog in. And we're gonna put in our scaled value here in the volts. And then we're going to add our digital inputs here and our status, status digital. And our status digital was built over here. And then we just display it down here. And then what we do is we create a function called update. And that update, what we do is we use our XML HTTP open and we get our information, which is our JSON information that we just described in our REST um, API from our, our Bricks Do More PLC. And what we've done is we've actually asked for analog in, we've asked for eight of them, we've asked for our scaling input, our analog in value, and we asked for a digital input value. Then we hit send. Then we have a set timeout, which is our update time, every 200 milliseconds. And then what we do is we call that update. So then that starts our clock to continuously update the information on our dynamic web page. Then what we do at the end here is we take a look at um, the actual JSON code or REST API from our bricks and we can actually call that up to see what it's actually doing. And that's the end of our um, information. So does, it's not really a whole lot there, but you can see how, uh, how easy it is to create this document. Now again, all this documentation is available for free download on our website, accautomation.ca. So now once we have all that, we'll just uh, uh, call back up our uh, programming software and hit OK. And what we do is go to the PLC 
and then we go to browse PLC file systems and we have two different uh, locations that we can have in our PLC we have a RAM and we have our SD card that we have plugged in as well so these two different locations allow us to um, put in our dynamic web page so let's look at our RAM and we go to the root of it and you'll see this UP and this is where our user pages come from on our website so it's under UP and then under UP we have this ACC automation.htm which we just looked at the code for and we also have this ACC underscore do which is the logo of the ACC automation so that's the two files that we need in order to create and to run this website or web page. And you notice it's in the RAM memory of the PLC. So let's just take a look at that uh, hardware of the PLC. And when we do, you will see that we have our bricks here and it's the uh, BX-DMOP1E-10 ED13 and we have our ethernet connection back for programming as well as for displaying our website and the web dynamic web pages we also have our um, uh, input here which is our capacitive proximity sensor and it's going to our first input right here x0 and y0 turns on which is the same program we developed last time when we looked at the http web server over here on the CPU, we have our SD card that's plugged in. And right now, currently, we are running. So you can see here, if we undo this or take the proxy off, our output comes off, on, off. And then over here, we have our analog input coming in down here. It's off of our um, potentiometer here, connect to our 9-volt battery to give us a quick analog input so that we can determine whether or not that's working or not and display that on our website. So once we have it into our RAM memory, then what we can do is go over to our website again. And it's right here. And we look at our user pages. And when we call up our user pages, this ACC automation one, you will see now this is our dynamic website. And if I were to take my uh, capacitive proximity sensor, turn that off, you will see that here, my digital input turns off, turn it on and off again. You'll also see that if we were to change our rotary encoder here, you can see how nicely that just turns up and we can actually determine the number of volts that we have on there. So works very uh, quickly and, and uh, really aids in the operator experience when he looks at this and sees what's happening. And this is the actual address that I would actually hand out or distribute to individuals to actually see this information. Now, what you'll see that though, is when we looked at our programming on our unit, we actually are going to the RAM memory However, when we remove power to the PLC, that RAM memory no longer exists. So what we want to do is we want to go to our SD card. And again, we create a, um, a folder called UP. And then we put those same files in that UP folder. Then once we have that UP folder, what we'll do is develop a little bit of web code or code in our PLC ladder logic in order to determine and move that, that information from our SD card to our RAM in order to ensure that our web page actually is working. So here's our program from last time. There's our input, our output turns on. Then what we want to do is we use the math function and we use the expression for uh, the system startup, the year, month, and day, hour, and minute, to the current uh, year, month, hour, minute 
uh, and day. And when those two are the same, it actually will turn on output bit um, C0. And C0 then turns on for one minute once the PLC um, is applied power. So when the bricks do more PLC, it's applied power or it powers up. What we get is that bit turning on for one minute. When that happens, what we do is we create a file in our RAM called UP. And then we turn on bit C1 to indicate that it's been successful. Once C1 turns on, then what we do is we start a timer to ensure that we um, uh, have some time to actually, once that, that uh, user directory is created for our user pages, then what we do is we transfer, transfer our, from our card over to our um, RAM, our HTM program file called accautomation.htm and we transfer that over into the same directory as our uh, on our RAM. Then what we do is we also transfer our picture that we want as well on our site. So once we have that, then we can just end the program and that's it. So we need this to in order so that when we have power shut off to the PLC, it powers back up again, we transfer that information over to our RAM and then everything functions as normal. So that is how we do it in our logic. So let's just go back to our website and watch this for a second here. And what you'll notice is that if I were to, again, power off the site, turn it off, and now nothing's actually updating on my site here. And let's transfer it back. When we do that, again, it takes it from my SD card, puts it into our RAM card, and starts running the program again. And you can see here, automatically, we'll then start implementing and updating my data again. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us, or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click that bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Stay safe.